Hey YouTube, how's it going? In this episode of my little Natron series, we're going to be looking at keyframing and how it works in Natron. I'm going to use the color wheel as an example. So what we're going to do is go to the first frame and we're going to make a transform node. We're going to scale it way down and we're going to move it over here. So the default state of any knob is gray, where it has a value and that value is the same for the course of the entire frame range. So if we want to make it animated, we can right click on it and go set key. And what that will do is make it go a dark blue. Dark blue means that there is a keyframe on this frame. It's also represented in the viewer by having a blue uh, frame over here. Green means that the frame has been cached and is living in memory. So when we look at a frame, it will cache it to memory. Blue means there is a keyframe there. So keyframes, dark blue, animated knobs, but not a keyframed frame, light blue. So that's, so we're going to delete this uh, keyframe and we're going to remove all the animation. Uh, so, but we're going to keyframe the translation here. So we're going to set a key on all dimensions, meaning the X and the Y. And then we're going to go to say frame 15 and we're going to move the ball down to the bottom here. And we're going to put a little below the bottom and we're going to set a keyframe just about here. Maybe, maybe put a little bit further. Whoops. My pen didn't register that it left the ground. So we're going to go about here and we're going to set, actually no, we're going to go here and we're going to set an, a key on the scale and then we're going to go to this frame and we're going to squash it a little bit like that and then we're going to have it bounce up at this frame here and we're going to set the value back to 0 0.03 and we're going to have it unsquash pretty quickly because it's a springy ball just like that so now we have a bouncing ball that defies physics kind of well not too badly it's being thrown at the ground pretty quick so as you can see we've now animated two knobs in the ball and the color wheel and it bounces kind of not really that is the very basics of keyframe animation. Another way to visualize these keys is in the curve editor and the dope sheet. So the most basic one is the dope sheet where it's basically just another timeline, but we can see the keyframes here. We can click and move them around like that. Um, and yeah, that's basically the dope sheet. The curve editor is a little more interesting uh, where you can actually see the animation curves. So if we look at say X, for example, it'll be a straight line pretty much because it just goes from one side of the frame to the other and X, Y, so you can see it bounces, so it goes down and it comes back up. So, and then you can, of course, manipulate these uh, curves to have a different kind of path or animation. Uh, and for a, for a knob to show up in the curve editor, it has to be animated because it doesn't have a, an animation path if it's not uh, animated, so it won't show up here. And um, so you can adjust the timing um, they, knobs tend to only move in one direction so whatever direction you move them in first they won't then go the other way so I've moved this one up and down it won't go left to right so you've got to unclick and then re-click and drag it left first and uh, that's the basics of it you can select multiple points and drag them around together so you can maintain sections of animation and move them over you can scale them you can scale them very dramatically with a pen, I guess. It should work a little calmer with a mouse. Yeah, like that. Oh, I see. It's You click and you drag up and down. Right. And that's pretty much all you need to know uh, for keyframing in Natron. Um, if you, oh, one other thing is if you move to a frame and move an animated knob, it will automatically set a key. Uh, so you don't have to do that manually. Roto nodes also, um, by default, 
set keys. So if I draw a shape like this and close it with enter and then I move back some frames and I move it over, it will move by default. I didn't have to set the state of animation to animated for roto uh, and paint nodes. They just do that by default. There is a ripple edit version. So if you wanted it to behave as if there was only one keyframe or change all of the keyframes at the same time, this option here, the ripple edit button, with this enabled, all of the shapes will experience the same change. See how I dragged it out. I dragged this one shape out on one frame and now it also applied to this other keyframe. And also made a keyframe over here because I wasn't on the frame, any keyframed frame. So that's the slight difference in behavior between uh, roto and uh, regular knobs. So because I still have ripple on, uh, this will apply if I turn ripple off and I move this out here. For the, this frame here and here, the roto shape will be back over here like that. And it, yeah, so that's because ripple is off. If I go over here and I turn ripple back on, I drag, I drag this out the shape this change will be applied for every keyframe so that'll do it for keyframing in natron it should be more than enough to get you started with how it works in the next episode we'll be looking at tracking and using the keyframe data from tracks to apply to transforms and corner pins to speed up things like roto and applying corner pins to images to match um, with your plate so stick around for that and i hope you enjoy and uh, cheers have a good one